gone. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to class today. Oh, we are going to start seated. So please find a comfortable place to sit. Um, make sure maybe that you move the flesh out from the sit bones. Uh, I'm sitting up on a blanket this morning. Uh, and as we know, don't sit in a way that is painful for you. If it is better for you to sit with your legs straight or up on blocks, more of a hero pose or thunderbolt pose, uh, please do that. And I wanted to start with a really short reading this morning um, that made me think about the theme we've been working on, which is kind of listening to the body. And if you remember last class, if you were here, we talked about the fantastical kingdom of the body. <laughs> I'll share that with you later, Celeste. Um, so it is, you know, it is this um, constant awareness and really wonder about our bodies and what our individual bodies are doing in our yoga poses and in our yoga practice. And so this felt like it I went along with this. And this is just a very short quote by Mark uh, Nepo. And he says, to listen is to lean in softly with the willingness to be changed by what we hear. And it is that simple, right? We do our yoga poses. And if we can listen, listen to the body or listen to what uh, we're feeling, uh, we can potentially be changed by that. So in a practical sense, if we're in a yoga pose and something feels really yucky, we can ignore that message or we can listen to the message and go, okay, what can I do differently? Can I honor my body enough to listen and to change something in the process and be changed by that? Okay, so there it is. Sit well, maybe close your eyes, let your hands rest softly on your legs or in your lap. And as you close the eyes, just picture, right, this spine of yours from the tailbone all the way up to the base of your skull. And notice how it feels. And if you were to listen to your body this morning, what would it tell you? What is it that we need to hear? And we start to bring the breath in, maybe counting, inhaling and counting up to the number four, and then pausing at the top of that breath and exhaling to the count of four. And as we do this counted breath, we feel the whole body settle down and settle in. And as Mark Nepo says, maybe we lean into what the body is trying to say. Counting in to the number four. Pausing at the top, exhaling to four. Good, two more rounds here of this counted breath. And then let your eyes open, 
Maybe start to roll the shoulders a little bit. Still drawing the breath in, maybe a little bit deeper. Exhaling it more fully. Good, one more nice big roll of those shoulders and then take the arms up. Exhale, left hand down, right arm reaches over. Reach over the knee, inhale, take the arm really high. Exhale, behind you, take the other arm up and big stretch. Good, press both arms up. Exhale it down. Take both arms up. Exhale the right hand down, the left arm reaches over. And then take it over the knee. Inhale, reach up. Exhale as you take it behind you. Reach with that right arm, take it overhead. Big stretch, front of the body, side of the body. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, let go. Good, take it up. Exhale, one hand down, the other one over. Reach over the knee. Inhale all the way up, diagonal. We've been here already. Take the other arm up and then just reach over. Reach back behind you. Watch this twist and inhale both arms up. Exhale it down. Good. Take it up. Exhale, right hand down, left arm reaches. Take it over that knee. Reach up overhead. Take it behind you. Reach with the other arm. Stretch. And then reach a little bit more, stretch it out. And bring both arms up, exhale it down. Good, roll those shoulders out, well done. Take both arms to cactus position. And then just feel, and always shift out the legs if they're getting cranky. Feel what happens as you start, keep the elbows separated from each other and just start to twist to the right. And allow the gaze to follow. Notice how it feels in the hips, right? In the waist, the belly button, the chest. And then take the right elbow and press it back even more. And breathe. Don't overdo your twist. Come back to the center. Bring both elbows together. Open them back up. Twist everything to the left. And I want you to go slow here. This is that part of the listening, right? To the body and allowing it to change. The left elbow presses back, maybe just a little more, and then bring them back together. Good, open them up, twist again to the right, hold here, feel the waist, the chest, the shoulders, the right elbow reaching back, and then just take the left hand to the left knee, or to the right knee, and breathe. Leave the right elbow bent, See if it will move just a little more. Don't overdo here. It's very early for twists. Release that back to cactus. Come to center. Squeeze the elbows together. Open them up. And last one. Twist. Hold. Feel the belly engage. Take the right hand to the left knee. Open up the left elbow a little more. And come to center, bring the elbows together, whew, and release. Good, roll that out. And then take both hands in front of you. Want you to think of table pose, downward facing dog, those kinds of poses. Flex the wrists, and then pull the shoulders back and try to squeeze your shoulder blades together. This is going to make more sense in a little bit. And then not necessarily round, but press the hands away from you like you're pressing against the floor and imagine getting the shoulders wider. So it's really, really basic here. So squeeze them back, squeeze the shoulder blades, and then just press that imaginary wall away from you. Good, one more, squeeze and press and go wide and then release. So the idea in the poses that are gonna follow is not to round, but to widen, to broaden, widen, to take the shoulder blades and protract them, to move them away from each other, to strengthen and solidify the upper body in these poses. Good, last one, inhale. Exhale to your heart, interlace, press out. Pull the shoulders back, but keep the shoulder blades wide. Take the arms up. Remember, if this hurts, please let the hands go. Take the hands behind you. 
the back of the head nestles into the hands, the shoulders go wide, and imagine this part of the chest just moving back a little bit, the ribs moving back a little, a little bit, the belly toning, and press the back of the head into the hands without lifting the chin, right? All this upper body work already. And then release, take them out, inhale up, exhale to your heart and shake all that out. All right, good job, everyone. Let's come to table pose. I'm gonna use my blanket for my knees. We're gonna be here just a little bit. So maybe you put something underneath the knees to make them feel good. You'll want your blocks nearby. We're not gonna use them yet. So come to the hands and the knees and plant your hands, spread the fingers, and then imagine you, you're gonna scrunch the yoga mat underneath your hands. So you're just gonna kind of claw in a little bit. Leave your hands where they are, but imagine externally rotating the shoulders. So as if you could draw the heels of your hands in and your fingertips out, right? A little external rotation there. And then do the opposite. Imagine pushing the heels out. The hands, the fingers would turn in if you would let them move. Feel that. Neither one right or wrong here. And then go back and forth a couple of times, just isometrically moving the hands so that the shoulders internally or the upper arms internally and externally rotate. And then pick one that feels kind of good to you. Might be what you normally do. For me, it's more of an external rotation. And then pull the hands apart. Isometrically, again, try to broaden. Feel your upper shoulders. And then drop between the shoulders and squeeze the shoulder blades toward each other. Here we are retracting. And then push the floor away from you. Push, 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 push. Don't round, but feel the shoulder blades move apart. From here, everything else working, you're either a slight internal or external rotation, pulling your hands apart from you, flip the toes under, get super wide in the shoulders, just lift your knees. Remember to claw in just a little bit, breathe on the belly, lower the knees, come on off those hands, Ooh, shake out those wrists and breathe. Good, shake that out. Good, let's come here one more time. Spread the fingers. Maybe you point the index fingers straight ahead. See how that feels. Maybe you internally or externally rotate uh, through the arms. Claw in a little bit like you're holding on to a jar lid. Pull the hands apart. Arms are straight, toes are flipped under. The belly tones in and you feel really broad between those shoulders. Lift the knees, hold on, right? Find that, maybe look at your feet. They're pointing straight forward. Press your chest toward your thighs. Don't move anything else. The knees are bent really deep. The hands are clawing in softly. You're internally or externally rotating. Breathe. And then take yourself forward, lower the knees. Woo. Come on off those hands and shake it out. So it's hard, right? So we've got a hard floor. We've got a hardish mat. We're pressing all that weight into the hands. And you can really feel it, right? Been doing this for years, still really feel it. So we always want to take those breaks. But this next one, third one, we're going to do the same thing. I want you to feel where the weight of your hands is so everything else we just did but feel where the hands are and my darling friend out there um, who probably is not on her knees i hope you're doing this on your chair just until we get moving so here we are again spread the fingers watch that you don't overspread the thumbs by the way there's been a lot of uh discussion about not over straining those thumbs Kind of claw in like you're just trying to hold on to something or squeeze the mat under your hands. Either isometrically go outward, right? External rotation or slightly in. 
Press the hands away from you. Now feel, where is the weight in your hands? Got this whole upper body waiting on the hands. Do you lean out to the pinky side? Do you lean too heavy into the thumb side? Try to draw the weight at the center, uh, middle fingers knuckle, right? That base of the hand there, press right there. Press the hands away from you. Slip your toes under, squeeze your belly. <laughs> Lift the knees. Come back to the center line of the hands, maybe to that rack of knuckles. And then start to bring the chest toward your thighs. Re-identify where's the weight in my hands. Can I lift the base of the thumbs and then spread them down? Can I claw the mat underneath my hands? Can I move into the index knuckle? A lot going on here. Find your breath. Broaden through your shoulders. And then lower your knees to the floor. Woo! And come on off those poor little hands. Maybe rub them together. Maybe shake them out. One of the things I love to do is just squeeze where the wrist and the hand come together. You might feel a little pop noise where those bones are kind of realigning. Shake that out. All right. Come on here. Do everything we just did, but do it quicker so we're not on our hands for too long. Flip your toes under. Find downward facing dog. So in down dog, I want you to feel the tips of your fingers. Move it down to the rack of knuckles. Feel the index finger get long. Press your, sorry, not index, middle finger. Feel that middle finger press. And then the index knuckle. Then the rest of the palms of the hands. <sighs> Broaden through your shoulders. Get wide. Feel that slight internal, external rotation, and then press the hands away from each other. And breathe. And then walk those hands all the way back. You can take your feet wide. Maybe move your blanket out of the way for now. Bend your knees. Hands come to your knees. Look up and stand up shake those babies out right it's amazing even with years of yoga that you can go holy crapola <laughs> that's really can get tender so you're at the back of your mat fine mountain pose <sighs> pull the shoulders both kind of back but keep them broad and then let the hands just hang wherever they are the back of the head pulls back, the chest lifts. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bend your knees, forward fold. And plant all your fingertips on the floor like you're making little cages underneath your hands. Keep the knees bent and then press into those fingertips without hyperextending a finger. In other words, all your knuckles are bent. Breathe, push into your fingers, broaden through the shoulders, maybe isometrically, internally or externally rotate. Feel the strength of your fingers. Imagine you could scrunch these this yoga mat underneath your hands. Breathe. And then start to flatten the hands and walk them to down dog purposefully on purpose walk 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 find downward facing dog spread the fingers claw a little bit underneath do all the things that we just did and lift the heels a whole bunch and breathe spread the palms of the hands curl them in and then inhale, exhaling, lowering the knees to the floor, step forward with your right foot. Grab your blocks. Your hands will be happy. <laughs> and then flip your toes under and lift your knee off the floor. So left knee is lifted, right knee is forward, bent ankle to knee, ideally pause here. And feel the back leg, right? The inner thigh kind of rolls up toward the ceiling. That back leg gets nice and straight. You're on the ball mound here. And find your breath. 
Leave your left hand on the block. Take the right arm to cactus pose. I know it's a little bit tricky here. Make sure you're pushing the floor away from you. Fire up the back leg. And then start to lift the right elbow. Keep the arm in cactus and come into a lunge twist. Just easy here. I'm looking over to the right side. My shoulder is engaged, but imagine pressing the whole forearm up to the ceiling. And then lower that hand down. Let that hand come to your block. Breathe. Take your hands to your knee. Lift your chest. Inhale up. Find your breath. Take both hands behind the soft back of the head, or not soft, I guess, but the back, the round back of your head. Press your head into your hands. Open up your chest. Broaden through the shoulder blades. Release, inhale up. Exhale, hands down. Set your blocks just off for a little bit. Step back to downward facing dog. Inhale to tippy toes. <sighs> Exhale, lower your knees. Think back to a small child's pose. Keep your hands planted. Breathe. <sighs> and then drag the hands back to lift yourself to table pose. Find everything we did at the beginning of class. Maybe an internal, maybe an external rotation. <sighs> Move the weight to the middle and index fingers. Flip your toes under. Lift the knees. Broaden the shoulder blades. Down dog. Maybe pedal the feet here. Maybe reposition the hands. Find your breath. Hold that down dog. Feel the strength of your arms. Come up to tippy toes. Look forward, step forward, left leg. Bring your blocks into play. You can always lower your knee, by the way. Find that solid, steady lunge. If your hands are on your blocks, it should be light. You should be able to pick up a hand without the pose changing very much. Leave your right hand on the block. Take your left arm to cactus. Your elbows right outside your shoulder. The back leg gets super active here. And then lift that whole forearm toward the ceiling. And breathe. Power up the back leg. Breathe. And then imagine trying to touch your elbow to the ceiling. Like lift that space where it is and then take it back down. Lower that hand to your block. One, stay here. Two, take your hands to your knee. Lift your chest. <sighs> Inhale, reach the arm and breathe. As you exhale, the hands come behind you, interlace and press the palms toward each other. Release, take your hands to your blocks. Listen up, you're gonna walk your blocks forward just a little bit and step forward. Bend both knees, hands to knees, come on up, inhale. And exhale. Nice job, shake it out, roll it out. Take both arms to cactus. Roll the shoulders back and down. Tone in through the belly. Imagine somebody has each elbow and they're trying to touch opposite walls. And then engage the back muscles. Release strain and stress in the head, the neck. Right, so how do we engage back muscles without squeezing? Can we go wide first and then feel the shoulder blades wrap down? And then we feel the muscles go, oh, Okay, I feel these muscles wrap around that spine. That's what we're looking for. Inhale here. Exhale, bring the elbows together and come into a squat. Find your breath. Palms touch, elbows touch if possible. Lengthen through your tailbone. Find your breath. Release those arms. Inhale, take it up. 
Take it to cactus. Bring the elbows, hands together. Come to squat. Breathe, press back through the sit bones. Release, inhale. Exhale, cactus. Last one, squeeze those elbows. Do you feel the stretch? Come on down. Hold here, tone in through the belly. Breathe, release, sink down. Inhale up and exhale. Nice, nice, nice. So what happens when we get pain here is we do a lot of this. We round, round, round. I think, as Doug Keller once said, it is kind of the opposite. We need to stretch here. So if we take take both your hands, just as an example, like hold on to those shoulders or those deltoids and pull them out to the side. But don't squeeze back so much. Engage instead of squeeze. And just feel that and then feel the chest lift. Feel the elbows drop a little bit. Yep, there you go. Open up that as if you could spread those shoulders even wider and then take the arms out and feel the arms. Shake out the head. What is the body telling you? Breathe, how heavy are your arms? <laughs> Can we float them instead? Did that change something when we let the tension go and we decided to let them float? And then exhale, let go. Good, shake them out. Come on back to the front of your mat. Inhale, reach up. Exhale all the way down. Step back, right leg. Find that pose, lengthen. Good, you can have your blocks in play. Leave your right hand on your block. This time, take the left arm forward. And imagine the line from your back ball mound of your foot to your front fingertips. Pull the left hip back a little bit. Level out your head, your neck. And then take the left arm up slowly. Follow it, follow it, follow it. Turn the palm out. Imagine the fingertips lifting up to the ceiling. The chest opening up the shoulder integrating into that chest so that we're not just reaching the arm back. And then circle it the rest of the way back, 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 all the way to your block. Set those blocks aside. Plant your hands if you can, right? Not everybody can reach quite that low. Step back, downward facing dog. Find the hands. Soften that head, the neck, either internally or externally rotate. And if you're not sure, try both ways. Which way creates stability? Which way doesn't or doesn't feel good or pinches? Come to your tippy toes. Realign the hands, press them away from each other. Spread through the index and middle fingers. Breathe, and then lower the heels more. Inhale, tippy toes, lower down to your knees, Whew. and release fully. Grab your blanket. I realize I have to do the other side, but we're going to do something while we're on the floor. <laughs> so grab your blanket. I just want you to play with this idea. <clears throat> so a lot of times in yoga, again, we um, shy away from uh, the upper body, right? So our chaturangas are crappy, <laughs> our down dogs, we cave in the shoulders, right? So um, planks, right? Our planks don't feel strong. Our legs can get really strong, our hips, but we wanna just think about what is it that we're doing with these arms in these poses. So we're on our knees again, or you're standing and you're using a chair. Go ahead and bring the hands uh, down to the floor and breathe. And then just lower your left elbow and push it up again. Good. Just the left side. So lower 
and lift the other arm relatively straight. Lift and lower. Notice the hand again. Good. And then straighten that arm and hold. One, you're going to do five more of those. Two, you're going to take your right hand to your hip. And you're going to lower and lift your left elbow. Three, four, and five. And lift. Yeah, right? So big difference. Two hands down, one hand down. Right? Noticing, again, the strength of the arms. So here we are, table pose again. Keep the hands soft. Only bend your uh, right elbow. Now, if you're feeling crunched up, by the way, maybe you just bring the knees back. That might help some of you if you're having trouble getting the elbow down. So three, four, focus on what the hand is doing. Five, either five more of those or take the left hand off and lower. Try not to do the whole hip thing, right? It's just your arm. Four, five, good. Plant both hands, both elbows down. Lift the elbows just an inch. Watch tension in the head, the neck. Plant your hands, internal, external rotation, and then try to pull those hands away from each other. Woo! and feel what's happening in these arms that are halfway suspended. Breathe, lower them even more, but don't let them touch. Pull the hands away, but don't let the elbows splay. And then push both arms straight. Realign the hands, wrists um, just above or below shoulders or slightly forward. Find those hands again. Are they feeling any different? Flip your toes under, squeeze in the belly, broaden through the shoulders, lift your knees. Press the chest back toward your thighs. Don't let the shoulder joints collapse, right? These arms, these shoulders, these muscles, the back, they are all supporting your pose. And then straighten the legs. Find downward facing dog. Look through your hands, lift your heels, step forward, right leg. Bring your blocks into play. Oh, this probably feels good after all that. Shake out your hands. Power up the back leg. Reach the right hand forward. Press the heel back and the fingers forward. Start to lift that arm, follow it. Turn the palm out. Find this gorgeous little twist, but more so this expansion of the arms, the shoulders, the shoulder blades. Good. Allow it to go back behind you. Slowly lower it down. Hand comes to your blocks. Push off your back leg. Step forward. Bend your knees, everybody. Inhale, reach up. Exhale to your heart. Take those palms uh, back to back or back to the hands to the back and maybe raise them up. See how far they'll go. Stretching out the backs of the wrists and then lower, shake that out. Ooh, good. You don't need your blanket, but if you want it, because you'll know you're going to be down on a knee or so, leave it there. Find mountain pose. Think about it, right? Listen to your body. The more I learn about yoga, the more I know there is never one way to do anything. And so what is that way for you that honors your process? Inhale, reach up. Exhale, float down. Hands can come to blocks. Find your breath. Make sure your ankles and your hips are pretty lined up so it's not a super deep forward fold. You're going to keep your body where it is. Bend your right knee, just your right knee. Take the left arm up, out to the side, 
reach it up maybe to the ceiling. Your right knee is bent. This is going to help this twist. Imagine pushing your right hand away from the floor, your right shoulder away from the floor. And then maybe an internal rotation of that top arm, reach behind your wrist or behind your waist. Maybe you find your waist or your thigh. Breathe. Keeping that right knee bent, take the arm back up to the ceiling. Exhale, lower it down. Straighten both legs, shake that out. Bend your left knee. Here we are again. Take the right arm out to the side. Keep that bend in the left knee. Start to raise that right arm up toward the ceiling. Internally rotate, take that hand behind you. Maybe you find that opposite hip or thigh. Keep the gaze soft to that right side. Don't lift the chin here, keep it level. Keep the knee bent, take that arm back up to the ceiling. Exhale all the way down to the floor. Move the blocks out of the way. Find the floor with your hands. Step back, downward facing dog. Find your breath. Inhale, tippy toes. Exhale, lower your knees. Walk both of your hands forward on your mat. Draw the inner elbows toward each other. You're almost like if you were to drop your chest, right? You would come into puppy stretch. But here, I want you to gather something between those elbows, like gather up a whole bunch of wonderful things between those elbows and then drop the elbows to the floor and then push up. Good, drop down, up and squeeze. When you lift, lift to a straight arm. Good, let's see if we can do five more here. Plant the hands, feel the index fingers push. And two left, and one left, press in, and then press the fingers away from you as you come to puppy stretch. Good, come forward, drop down onto your elbows, find Sphinx pose, and pause. In Sphinx Pose, so it's kind of interesting, right? In Sphinx Pose, here we are again with this idea that we can sink down through the chest. It doesn't feel good, at least not to me. Um, but we do want to watch our lower backs. Uh, so don't overdo. You can walk elbows forward. But from that sunken in position, can we imagine taking the shoulders to the side walls? Lifting the chest, toning in through the belly. Find the hands. Fingers are spread, slight clawing in. Imagine drawing the elbows just a little closer to the chest. Find your breath. Lift the elbows. Hold, right? So here we are in a back bend, not quite cobra, not quite sphinx. Drop the shoulders, but keep them broad. Breathe. And then just for fun, let's see if we can drop elbows and lift for maybe 10, 9, on purpose here, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, yep, 3, keep lifting. Two, you got it. One, lower those elbows, drop the chest, take the arms to cactus on either side of you. Just relax for a moment. Press the pubic bone down, really lengthen your tailbone and feel the tops of your feet. And then imagine you've got to take all your limbs off the floor kind of quick don't do it too fast but from here it's almost a little like right you're gonna lift your arms lift your legs find that and just lower good inhale exhale reach and lower 
I feel like a little bug that's landed in water and I want to get out of the water, you know, so I'm going to go lift and lower, two more, lift, lower, last one, lift, hold, lengthen the tailbone, imagine your toes touching the wall behind you, take those elbows to your side body and then allow the arms to extend back, you can do palms up, palms sideways, palms down, which way feels good? Breathe. And then release the arms, release the body. Come all the way down to the floor. Shake out those hips. <clears throat> Maybe let the hands be a rest for your forehead. Breathe. Release this, everyone. Hands under shoulders, press into your knees, and then find down dog. And close the eyes and listen to your body. Your body might go, that's quite enough, and come down to your knees and chill out in child's pose. Your body might say, the pose feels good, but the shoulders don't feel supported. What do I do differently? The hands feel crappy because I'm putting too much weight on them. Can I move? Can I bend the knees and move the weight back a little more? Where is it for you? Come to tippy toes, look through your hand, step forward, left leg. Take both hands to your knees, lift the chest. Inhale, whoop, inhale, reach up. Find your breath. Choice here, hand to knee. Other hand just reaches back, there is your twist. Or hands to heart. Elbow to knee, stay tall, stay broad, and then open up both wings, both arms. Push through the back leg strongly. Yeah. Bring those hands back to prayer. Come to center. Inhale. Exhale to your heart. Push off. Stand forward. Find your breath. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Step back with your left leg. <laughs> and to think about that for just a second, tone in through your belly, take your hands to your knee, lift your chest, take the arms up. Just find the lunge, right? Find the strength here. Breathe, either hand to opposite knee, or hands to heart as you come to elbow, to knee, and then ooh, open the wings <clears throat> and breathe. Bring those hands together back to center. Take the hands to the floor. Step back down dog. Lift your heels, float to plank. Widen the feet a little bit. <clears throat> Squeeze in through the belly. Push the floor away from you. Internal, external rotation. Try to pull the mat away from you. Breathe. Lower the knees. Child's pose. Or hero pose. Find your breath. If you're in child's pose, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can, let the hands float back alongside you or under your forehead just to rest your shoulders. Just follow your breath.
listen to the rhythm of your heart and notice how it slows down as you rest. Feel your breath. From child's pose, come on back up. Maybe you use your blanket for your knees just to, because you love yourself and you love your knees. <laughs> walk the hands forward and then walk them to the right edge of your mat and press the hips back. So child's pose, but leaning to the right side. Hips press back to the left. Press into your hands, walk the hands center, and then all the way over to the left. Press the hips back. Press center, hands underneath your shoulders. Do everything we just learned, everybody, right? And just notice what feels good in your hands in this very simple table pose. Press the right leg back and lift. Think about it. Take the left arm out and reach. You are fully weighting this right hand. Claw in. Find the width of the shoulders. Take the left arm out to the side and then reach it back, palm up. And release. I know some of you are going, that's enough of the hand. <laughs> Shake it out, we're almost done. Back to table pose, press the left leg back, level out the hips, lift that leg. Claw in the left hand, consider lifting the right arm. What feels better here? Is it a slight internal rotation? Is it a slight external rotation? <sighs> Take the right arm out to the side. Reach it back and behind. <sighs> lower that hand. Lower the knee. Find downward facing dog. Spread your fingers, try lifting the fingers. And then spread the fingers. And then lift the heels of the feet. And then lower the heels and try lifting the toes. Take your feet wide, walk those hands back. Bend your knees, everybody, hands to knees. Come on up. Move your blanket out of the way last time. Find mountain pose, shake out those hands. Ooh. And breathe. Take your feet slightly wider, just slightly. Inhale, take it up. Hands to heart, come on down. Maybe your elbows touch your knees. Maybe. Breathe. Maybe you can take your elbows inside your knees and squeeze the knees into the elbows and the elbows into the knees and feel your back body work. Ooh, and your legs, right? No kidding. <laughs> Hands to knees, come on up. Walk the feet back to table or back to hips with. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, squat, hands to heart. Take your elbow to your opposite knee. Press that elbow into your knee, open up the wing.
Bring your hands back together, center. Go to the other side and open. Bring your hands together, come back to center, inhale up. Exhale to your heart, shake them out. Last one, last one, shake it out. All right, so a little bit of balance work here. You're gonna walk those feet together so that your knees touch, right? So everybody's legs are different. Ideally, the knees touch. Your feet don't have to touch. Your knees ideally do touch. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, come on down, squat. First thing we're gonna do is just find your balance point. Squeeze your belly, squeeze the knees. See if you can lift one foot. If you're here and okay, arms to cactus. Come back with the hands, lower the feet. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, come on down. Squeeze the knees, lean forward. See if the other foot will lift. You're steady here, take the arms out. Release, release. Inhale, reach up. Exhale to your heart. Take it out, everybody. Well done. Well done. Come on back to the front of your mat. <clears throat> Inhale it up. Exhale, forward fold. Step back, down dog. We're almost there, I promise. Plant your hands. Do everything that is good for you that you have discovered with the hands, the arms, the shoulders, the broadness of your back. One, you're here. Play with your down dog. Two, hand to opposite thigh. Release that other hand to other thigh. Release that plank pose. Push the floor away from you. Find your pose. Lift one leg, optional. I know, a lot of upper body today. Lower. Lift the other. Lower. One hand off. Lower. Other hand off. Lower, knees down. Come on down to your bellies. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lower all the way down. Shake out those hips. Whew. Lengthen your tailbone. And just bend one knee. One, you're here. Two, you're going to reach back, same side hand, and just grab your shin or your foot and stretch your quad. Release that side. Bend the other leg. Lengthen through the thigh here. Lengthen through the sit bones. And grab that foot only if it makes sense. And release, roll on to one side and bend your knees, just pause here. You can use your hand or your arm for a pillow for your head. Again, the tailbone lengthens the belly tones. Bring that top knee to your shoulder. You can grab that leg with your hand, with your arm, just bring the knee up toward your shoulder. And then maybe you grab your toe and take that leg straight up to the ceiling and breathe. You can let go of the hand, bend the knee lower back down. 
take the top leg, straighten it out right in front of your hip. So it's straight out to the side and straighten the other leg down toward the end of your mat, short end of your mat. And just pause. One, you're here to just open up your chest if you haven't had enough twist yet today. <laughs> open the chest, arms go out to T position. Deep breath. If you have opened up the chest, curl back to your side first. Bend your top knee, bend your bottom knee. <laughs> Release this side, go to the other side. I'm just going to flip over. <sighs> first, just find that curled side position. It should feel really nice, especially on the back. Bring your top knee up toward your chest. Maybe grab your shin or your toe and take it up to the ceiling. The bottom leg stays grounded. Breathe. Release that. Put it back on top of your knee. And then straighten it out for, to the hip and straighten the bottom leg down low. Maybe open up the chest. Good. If you have opened up, first curl and then bring the legs back together. Come on to your back. Pause here. And breathe. Take both arms up to the ceiling. The palms are facing away from you. And I want you to imagine grabbing a rope and pulling the rope down so that the elbows go out to the sides right from the shoulders and then extend the arms out. So we're just in T position. And imagine pressing the back of the arms into the floor. So here again, we are broad in the shoulders. We are engaging the back body, but we are not scrunching the shoulder blades. The feet press into the floor. The tailbone gets really long and we lift up the hips. From here, let those hands come down to your sides, palms face down, baby bridge pose here. Watch the head, watch the neck. Stay broad in the shoulders, but don't over pull them. Find your breath here. Find the expansion of the shoulders. Press the backs of the arms into the floor. And then slowly lower it down. Good. Maybe I did not cue this, but maybe your strap here. I won't use one, but if you want a strap, go ahead and grab it. Bring your right knee to your chest and then extend the right leg up toward the ceiling. Press the knee back into the hand. Straighten the left leg. Some of you can move the hands up toward the shin, the calf muscles. Breathe. Keep your right hand on your right leg. Take the left arm out to the side and maybe the right leg out to the side as well. Your hand is supporting it. It's not going to go really far. Bring them both back to center. Bend your right knee to your chest. Release that foot to the floor and take your left knee in. Extend the left leg up toward the ceiling. 
soften the shoulders down, maybe straighten the right leg. Your strap would be around that left foot, by the way, if you were using it. Maybe the hands walk up to the shin. Soften and make the shoulders heavy. Leave your left hand on the shin, take the right arm out to the side, maybe take the left leg out to the side. Take it all back to center, bend that knee, release both legs, listen up. Both arms to cactus. See how that feels. See if your chest feels open, the head, the neck comfortable. The arms are right out from your shoulders. Press the back of the shoulders into the floor. Squeeze your glutes. Lift just one leg and it's just an inch or two. And release. Press down with that heel, lift the other leg just a couple of inches, press the upper body into the floor. And release, keep the feet down, squeeze everything down to the floor. So squeeze your hips, press the shoulders, press the heels, maybe your back of your knees lifts off the floor. Find your breath here. And release. Take your hands down, last one here. Grab the edges of your yoga mat. Your hands are down at your sides, but you're holding the edges. And I want you to push, pull that uh, mat away from you. In other words, you're trying to stretch that yoga mat underneath your hands. Squeeze your belly, maybe both of your legs lift. Just a couple inches. <sighs> And lower. And release your grip. Circle your wrists. Spread your fingers and then curl your wrists. And curl your fingers into soft fists and then curl the wrists down. And then fully let go. Let's find Shavasana. And in your Shavasana... I want you to feel your body. You might feel tired or energized or at peace. Can the legs equally weight down to the floor? Do the hips feel pretty even? Do the shoulders feel spread side to side with a softness? Allow the breath to move inward, let it soften. Allow your body to soften into your mat.
soften even more. to wiggle your toes. Bend your knees and just let your feet come to the floor. Take the arms and wrap them around your chest as if you were giving yourself a big hug. Keep the elbows soft down. Elbows are crossed, but just keep them soft so they're not hiking up toward the neck. And tuck the chin just a little bit. And then switch the position of your arm so the other elbow is on top. Release the arms, bring your knees up toward your chest. Feel free to squeeze them in. Maybe rock a little bit side to side, giving that low back and the sacrum a little massage. And then let the knees roll to one side or the other. As you're ready, press all the way up, come back to a seat. <sighs> Inhale, let the arms come up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart and bow to your own inner teacher, your inner listener. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming to class. <laughs>